I came across another conversation you were having where you talked about being at a conference and one of your fellow scientists uh, wishing that Oumuamua didn't exist and and how we should all be craving anomalies. And uh, I really, really felt that. Uh, I do feel like there's almost like a, a housekeeping approach to certain careers where it's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to crave anomalies. You're supposed to want mystery. This is nothing uh, new for me because uh, as a kid, I already witnessed uh, the same experience uh, sitting at the dinner table and uh, the adults in the room would uh, dismiss a difficult question that I would ask simply because they didn't know the answer. And in fact, that was one of the motivations for me to become a scientist, because uh, as a scientist, you are not supposed to pretend that you know the answer in advance. You're supposed to follow the evidence. And in fact, you can find the answer yourself. And this is pretty much uh, maintaining the, the, our childhood curiosity without prejudice. And uh, that's the biggest lesson we've learned from uh, Galileo Galilei being put uh, in house arrest by the adults in the room back then, which was the church or, or the philosophers, who knew the answer. They knew that the earth is at the center of the universe, or at least they wanted to believe that. And uh, they were much stronger, politically speaking. But that, of course, didn't change uh, the fact that the earth moved around the sun, irrespective of what they found to be popular at the time. And today they would have canceled him on social media, uh, which would have been uh, even worse than putting him in house arrest. Uh, and uh, if you were to ask those philosophers to design a rocket that would reach Mars, they would get it wrong. <laughs> there is a clear test of their uh, worldview as to whether it's uh, real or not. You just ask them to design that, the parameters of the rocket and they would, uh, assuming that the Earth is at the center and Mars moves around the Earth, they would just never reach the target. And so that's my point that um, you know, as scientists, we can be modest. We don't need to pretend anything. But then, uh, you know, as I became a scientist, I realized that a lot of the same psychology is practiced by other adults in the room. These are my colleagues in academia that are trying to uh, pretend they know much more than they actually know by uh, behaving as experts. Now, what does an expert mean? It means that you have a body of knowledge based on your experience. And when you see something new, you're trying to explain it uh, based on this knowledge. And uh, of course, you would be upset if uh, something comes along, an anomaly that cannot be explained by the knowledge you have, because that would illustrate a weakness in your ability to forecast anything that we see. And a lot of uh, experts are really bothered by anomalies and they try to brush them aside. In the case of the object that we are talking about, uh, all the experts that studied rocks throughout their careers for decades argue that it's a rock of a type that we've never seen before. Uh, you know, and even though it was the first object that we spotted near earth from outside the solar system, and you would expect it to be a typical rock, they argued, no, it's a rock, but of a type that is made of pure hydrogen, pure nitrogen, or maybe even a collection of dust particles loosely bound. We've never seen anything like it. We don't know whether our nursery is making such things, but nevertheless, they behaved like the adults in the room and they ridiculed any other interpretation, such as that maybe indeed it's something that we've never seen before, meaning was produced artificially by an extraterrestrial technological civilization. And to me, this experience resembles um, a caveman uh, finding a cell phone and arguing that it's a rock of a type that that caveman never seen before. Uh, and of course, that's legitimate as long as the caveman doesn't, is not curious, does not explore it further, because if he were to press a button and record his voice and press another button, and record his image, it will become clear through this learning experience, which is the scientific method, basically, by collecting more data, more evidence. Eventually, you realize this cell phone is not a rock. And of course, that has important implications. Uh, and then finding an object in space that is not a rock would have a dramatic impact on the future of humanity. And I say to myself, how can we ignore that possibility? How is it possible that on Twitter it's being ridiculed, that anyone considering it is um, stigmatized or 
ignored. And the, the point is, uh, you know, it's just like Pascal's uh, wager where, you know, the discussion about God cannot be ignored because the implications are huge. And uh, here is this, <laughs> another context where Pascal's wager uh, wager applies. And, um, and unfortunately, uh, academia, which is supposed to be very open-minded, is not really following on these anomalies, trying to figure out what they mean.